Thank you for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be looking at a 2005 Ford F-150. It currently has two engine codes in it. I'm going to show you how we took care of getting these lights to turn off and stay off. So first off we had the P0020 code intake cam position actuator open circuit on the driver's side. So that's bank two. And then a pending code of P0021 intake cam position timing over advanced for bank two as well as the driver's side. That would soon become a hard set code if he continued driving and we didn't do anything to take care of these codes. The component failure causing these codes will cause poor engine performance, running rough, if you notice they got vibration and such, poor fuel economy, and a huge decrease in power. Getting started real quick, on the passenger side, you have to peel up the seal, the gasket, a little bit so I could fit my hook under it and pull up on this gasket and it came right off. Uh, stay tuned on that. But you can see on the passenger side, this would be more for a P0010 for an open circuit bank one or P0011. That would be a cam timing over advance on the bank one, uh, as well as a P0012 cam timing over retarded bank one passenger side. But in this case, we're just doing the passenger side as a preventative maintenance. Both the codes that we pulled in the computer were pertaining to the driver's side. So passenger side, we're covering first, and the codes we already went over. To remove the seal, all I did was bend up a ear or the lip on both sides and use my little tweaker tool, my pick, to pull straight up, and it came off with no problems. The VCT, or the variable cam timing solenoid, should take you about 45 minutes per side. The passenger side is a tad bit easier. To remove that solenoid, you're going to need a long quarter-inch drive socket wrench and an extension, of course, and a T27 Torx bit. If you could find a magnetic, um, I don't think a magnetic will work actually, just don't worry about that thought. Uh, but do not drop the screw into the valve cover itself. What I did as I loosened the screw, I pulled up on the solenoid, so it came up with the screw, or the screw came up with the solenoid, it came up as like an assembly. Before I install the new one, I'm gonna use some nice, good, clean oil, lube up both of the little filters on here, any gaskets you can, lube them up before you put them on. Makes it a lot easier to go in. Now everything is lubed up nicely. When I install it, I'm gonna install it as an assembly, same way I took it out. So put the T27 socket, or Torx bit, sorry, onto the screw. Get everything loosely fitted first. Softly turn that screw. If it feels like it's getting cross-threaded, I'm gonna pull back and start over. You don't wanna have any tension. It shouldn't give you any struggle screwing that screw in. And as well, with pushing the solenoid in, you shouldn't have any struggles at all. This one slid right in. I didn't have any problems tightening it down. It was a perfect fit. I always say, if it doesn't go in right, or if it doesn't go in straight, there's some type of uh, debris or something in it, and it's hard to get in there, always double check yourself, pull it back out, just double check. As well, when you're tightening the Torx bit down on your solenoid, there is a proper Torx specification you should be tightening these to. In the video, I'm not doing proper etiquette and tightening it down to proper Torx specifications. We were kind of in a hurry. It was a last minute thing, but you should not do that. If you were doing this properly, you would be using a torque wrench and tightening these screws down to 44 inch pounds. So that's gonna be either, so you would need a quarter inch digital torque wrench or a quarter inch bar torque wrench. Either one would work just fine in the situation. When you remove the socket, be very careful not to drop the socket into the valve cover. You might get lucky and get a magnet to get the socket out if you do drop it, but hey, don't go through all those problems. Be very careful, take your time. Before you install the new seal, Make sure you clean off the area, preferably with a towel that will not leave any dust or any lint behind or drop anything into the valve cover. You don't want to contaminate the oil. After it's cleaned off, if you have any assembly lube or if you have like Vaseline or some, uh, what is that, petroleum oil, petroleum grease that is, uh, go ahead and lube up that little seal you just cleaned off or the little lip you just cleaned off. It makes the seal a lot easier to install. Make sure your seal is clocked properly. You have two ears that go in little grooves that are on the valve cover. So those gotta be lined up properly to be able to fit right. 
to get mine installed or get this one installed, I used a large deep socket uh, to get it started so it goes nice and flush at first. Uh, it didn't work to get it pushed down all the way. I, I didn't really trust it, I should say. So after I got it started, I used my half inch extension. That looks like a half inch, six inch extension uh, to make sure it was all nice and flush onto the valve cover. Don't go too hard. You don't want to bust that valve cover. You can see I'm using a rubber mallet. I'm not using any type of steel mallet uh, or anything heavy. So it's a real nice firm taps. Uh, you'll get a feel. You'll be able to hear when it's getting fresh, firmly pressed down. Remember, while you're watching this video, if it helps you out, make sure you comment below with the year, make, model of the vehicle that this is helping out on so other people know that this will help them too. The list of the vehicles that this video should help on is from the Ford Explorer, Expedition, the Mustangs, F-150s, uh, what else? You got the Lincoln Navigator, Mountaineer, and that's going to be everything from early 2000s to late 20 or about 2009, 14 on some models. I'll make a list in the uh, description below and see if your vehicle is on that list. If it is, hopefully this helps you out. You might have a little bit different layout of the engine, such as the power steering pump coming up on the driver's side, but this should generally get the job done. If it does, comment below. Also, if you need any parts or like that torque app or anything, make sure you look for links in the description below to purchase those as well. Getting started on the driver's side, you have to remove this here power steering reservoir. I just removed the bolts, nuts and bolts that held it on and set it off to the side. That gave me just enough room to get the driver's side variable cam timing solenoid off. And again, this is the side that was giving us the codes. So he was seeing that the car was, when he was accelerating, it wasn't getting up to speed as fast and he was using a lot more gas. So these two codes from this repair were taken care of. And that is gonna be the P0020, that was our hard set, and then the P0021. So the 20 code is a open circuit, just meaning that it's not making any connection to the computer. And the 21 is a over advanced bank two, and just probably the computer, that's when it last failed was, or the part last failed was when it was on the advanced side. I had to use my pry bar to get a little lip on the seal for the driver's side. Nothing too hard, too extreme. Just bend up the little lip a little bit. And I was able to pull straight up with that tweaker tool and it came right out. Probably you're not gonna have this luck. I'm very surprised I had that much luck getting those seals out as well. So good luck on that. If that is a pain in the butt or if you found an easier way to do it, comment below. Let us know, might help somebody out. You can see I'm being very careful and pulling on the solenoid as I'm loosening the screw. I don't want to drop that screw into the uh, valve cover itself. And I'm pulling it out all the, as one piece, as such as an assembly. What these solenoids do is pretty much make your vehicle a variable valve timing uh, engine. These control the oil going to the camshaft timing gear and it causes the vehicle to retard the timing or advance the timing depending on what you need on the load and how fast you're going and whatnot. The computer knows all that. You can see I lubed up the new solenoid before I insert it into the hole in the actual, what is that, cylinder head. Sorry, I almost said, well, it goes through the valve cover then into the cylinder head. Again, I'm gonna set it in there, get it all started softly. I wanna make sure that the solenoid will slide in easily, make sure that the screw starts very easily. I don't wanna cross thread anything. I don't want the solenoid to be sideways somehow. Just take time, make sure you take a look at everything. Don't go fast and of course, torque everything down. Get the right tools if you can. And if you don't know, or if you haven't used a torque wrench much, it is kind of hard to judge 44 inch pounds. That's like, I don't know, my toddler could do that. So tighten it down, don't go over tighten. I'm going to guten tight German torque specs. Do what I gotta do. Uh, driver's side, P0020, P0021. And you also, if you have a P0022, that might be uh, caused by this solenoid failing as well, but it might also be a wiring issue. So hopefully it's not that. You can see the large socket I used to start it on the other side is too big to use under the bracket. And you might want to take more time and use or remove that bracket. That might help you out a little bit more too, but you can see I did it without removing that bracket. I'm softly tapping the grommet down, trying to do it equally on three sides of the circle. Made sure it was clocked properly so it will fit nice and snugly into the valve cover. And that's pretty much it. We got to make sure we put our 
reservoir for the power steering fluid back on, tighten all that down, and get that intake put back on. But pertaining to this vehicle, after we got this job done, we cleared the codes. He drove it for a few hundred miles, and then he went and got the smog check. He passed just fine. And that's really what he was afraid he wasn't going to pass a smog because the check engine light was on. And I told him, hey, let's look at it. If you give me the parts, I'll make a video for you. So here it is. This video helped him out for the P0020, the P0021. Again, if this video helped you out, make sure you comment below. Like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about me, please. And if you have any questions, make sure you comment below or hit me up. Text me, 925-418-5096. Send me some pictures, ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer them. If you have any friends that work on their own vehicles or anybody that's getting a vehicle, I have a ton of DIY maintenance vehicle videos. And uh, if, if you take care of your vehicle, the vehicle takes care of you. That's why I do these videos to help you guys make your vehicles last as long as they possibly can. Like, subscribe, and share. If this video doesn't help you out right here, maybe one of my other videos do. I'll see you guys on the next hopefully helpful video. Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies.